Praise the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let, let me start from where uh, Mrs. Uh, Odubade just ended. I'm just welcoming you. I'm just saying good morning. Amen. You know, a lot of things were said during the convention. And the song that we are going to sing after we have finished what she shared is, I say yes, O oh God, to your will and to your ways. You see, if you don't first and foremost receive what God has spoken about himself and yourself, if you don't first receive it, you will not be able to move into those things that he has spoken of you. Because today we'll be talking about the things that do stand in the way of what God wants to do in your life. Luke chapter 5, I observe that Jesus did not say, let down your net. Jesus said to Peter, let down your nets. Now, if at that point, Peter had only one net, you will notice later that he had other brethren around him. Whose net he could have borrowed or could have also asked to come. Because what the master has in stock for you is beyond you. Say amen to that. God is going to use you to bless multitude of people. If only you can receive implicitly the word that God is given to you. So God was saying, let down your nets. But Peter could not imagine. First, the limitation he had was psychological. It was the day. And being a seasoned fisherman, he knew that fishes don't come to the surface during the day. So I want to say to you, what God is going to do in your life will contradict the norm of the day in the name of Jesus. Because shortly, as we carry the word of the Lord in our bosom and we begin to go places, as the Holy Spirit leads you, just obey. Just obey and you will see things happen. And that was why when he threw in one net, that net could not contain what the Almighty God had commanded to come for him that day. The net broke. He had to beckon to others. Look, come and use your other net to support us so that the fishes won't escape. Of all that the Lord has given you in this end time harvest, of all that the Lord has given to heritage of God's church, not one of them will escape in Jesus' name. I understood that when John the Baptist found his purpose and he relocated to the wilderness, as he was there, they were coming by the drove. They left the city. They were coming to him. I don't believe that where we are is Eden. When God is finished with you and I, the men and women that we will encounter in the, in the marketplace, they will come to us to come and know our God. So first and foremost, you need to believe God. You need to listen attentively to what God has said through the convention, what you will be saying right now, because it's going to be precept upon precept, line upon line, to enter into what he asked for us to do. Second Kings chapter 4. You will also see the same principle in Second Kings chapter 4. Actually, what God did was that the king of the universe commanded all the fishes to come to attention. He needs their service. He wants to bless an obedient servant of his. And all of them stood at attention. But alas, he had only part of the instruction that the master had given. Please pay attention this morning. Instructions will be coming your way. When you follow them, you shall see results in Jesus' name. Henceforth, our net shall begin to expand and uh, uh, bulge for multitude of things that God will do in our life. Now, you remember this story very well. It's the same principle. There was a need in our life. Our children were being taken to bondage because she could not repay the loan that the man of the house had, uh, had obtained when he was alive. And the man of God eagerly wanted to help. And he asked him, what do you have in your house? And you know what? God is asking you, how prepared are you for what is coming. Psychologically, don't look as if it is you that is going to do what we are talking about that God wants to do in our life. 
Remember, we were told that we have the gene of God in us. Come, let us make man in our image. And I'll be talking more on that because usually when God shows you what he's about to do in your life, the circumstances that surround the pathway to that place are usually very intimidating. So this woman, when she looked around her, she did not immediately see anything that was tangible. Then she remembered, I have something little at home. It's a pot of oil. It's a pot of oil. But she looked at that pot of oil as small, inconsequential to the debt that she had. Little did she realize that that pot of oil was more than enough. I want to tell you this morning, there is something in you that is more than enough for every situation you will ever encounter and you will be successful because God is with you. Amen. There is something in you that is God. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. We'll be talking about what you'll be overcoming shortly. But I'm introducing the fact that right within you, you've got all it takes. Because as you are sitting here now, you are not sitting here. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. How? Far above principalities and power. Do you know that if every Christian in this country will realize that fact, all these things that we keep circulating about Islam, they are nothing. It is because we have forgotten our estate, we have forgotten our position, and we are afraid. It's just like Gideon that was hiding away, not knowing that he was a man of valor. So this woman has something that God can use. And I observe that instruction also came away. way. Yes, you have that pot of oil, but you need vessels. Go out and borrow vessels, not a few. Borrow as many as you can borrow. Of course, she went out and borrowed. And you notice what? When she began to pour out as many vessels as were brought, that same pot of oil that she thought was insignificant, that she thought was going to finish by a few cookings in her home, became expanded and was getting more and more Listen to this. As you begin to go out by faith, as you begin to see people you need to minister to, as you speak to them by boldness, you will desire, I mean, you will observe that that thing that God has hidden in us during the convention will begin to expand. It will begin to expand. And one of us shall put to flight a thousand. And two of us shall put to flight ten thousands in the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid. Only be bold and courageous. I noticed that at a point, she said, bring me more. She was already enjoying what was happening. She was in the mood. Ah, you mean God can do this? Do you know that you will be blaming yourself when you get to heaven? You mean God, you gave me this much and this is the little I can do? May God open your eyes of understanding. May you begin to comprehend who you are in Christ. I say yes. Oh, yes. To your will and to your way, I say yes, oh yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I will yield, and my answer will be yes, oh yes, I say yes. Rise on your feet and sing that song of faith. To your will and to your way, I say yes, oh yeah. I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart I will yield, and my answer will be yes. Sing it convincingly. I say yes. One more time. I say yes. I say yes. Oh yes. To your will and to your will. I say yes. Oh yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my own heart I will yield. And my answer will be. 
Father, for the season you are bringing us into. Thank you, Father, Lord God, because he that does not believe the invincible cannot do the impossible. We choose to believe you. Your word appears incredible. They appear incredulous. They appear suspendable. They, 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 they seem to be for us to comprehend. But till this morning, we have spoken to you and in your hearing to say, we will trust you. We will obey you. We will say yes to that which you have spoken concerning us in the name of Jesus. We declare that we are able to go up and take the country. We will be able to redeem the land from Jordan and to the sea. Though giants may be on our way to India, but we have surely given us victory. This morning as we look into your world, grant us liberty of the spirit. Grant us grace to understand you. Every man in whatever state they are today, Father, lead them, O oh God, to the image of Jesus that we are going to see today in the name of Jesus. They look unto you. The Bible said their faces were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. Let shame be wiped away from every of us in this church in the name of Jesus. Cause us to enter into the season of rejoicing. Cause us to enter into the season of bringing in the sheaves. Cause us to enter into the season of net breaking miracles in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified this morning. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please sit, sit, take your seat. Take your seat. We'll be looking at overcoming the obstacle before your reobot. Surely God has said before each and every one of us our reobot. And it is something that the devil cannot take away. Because forever the word of God is settled. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Oh, it does not matter what you see right now. It does not matter what has been in the past. God is going to do a new thing. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. The thoughts of good. Why are you thinking contrary? Why are you thinking it will continue to be gloomy? Why are you thinking, will this happen? Will that happen? No. You rather focus on what God has spoken. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. You know, I know one thing about you. You will end well. There is no life that is here that will not end gloriously. Just believe God. That Rehoboth is there for you for taking. And you will get there in Jesus' name. So the few Sundays, I think a Sunday before the convention, I was sharing about uh, our, our, our brother Jacob, you know, when uh, uh, Isaac, rather, in Genesis 26, as he was there, there was a famine. And I said, there will always be challenges. And I show us in Isaiah chapter 60, how the Bible says, arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Today, I want to show you how that glory will shine. Because it's in the midst of obstacles. It's in the midst of circumstances that are challenging that that glory will shine. Amen? So, we were sharing then of Jacob, who, I mean, Isaac, I beg your pardon, who was about to leave where he was staying to go to Egypt. You know, in the times that we are living in, there are so many suggestions coming left, right, and center to the extent that people are into too many things. And that calls for us to be very careful, especially those of us who are looking for job, those of us who are unemployed. When you see numbers, call this number if you want so-so-so job. I understand that is some of the ways that these bad people are recruiting people. And when you get there and they give you 250000 that go and use that to solve your problem. And then they begin to lure the person and that's how they initiate them into the Bado court. But that's not our path. Amen. Isaac was intending to go to Egypt. But God stopped him in his track. said, don't go to Egypt. Sojourn in this land and I will bless you. And I will be with you. So the word of God kept him. He stayed in the land. And after he had stayed for some time, he had the leading to go and plant. And when he sowed, in that year, he reaped 
a hundredfold. But that's not where I'm going. I want to show you something there. Let's go to uh, Genesis 26. I, 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 what I'm doing is to bring you to the process of getting to that place where you will become the object of envy and you will get there in Jesus' name. You can imagine a man that wanted to run away to Egypt and in verse 13, the Bible says, and the man worked great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks. Come. How did that happen? Was it from the hundredfold return? I want to believe it was the presence of God with him in famine. And Peter said, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Such as we have in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. He said, let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Why do we, in a moment of, of, of challenge, ever think that God has forsaken us? I remember my son was saying, even the master felt something like that. When Jesus was on, was on the cross, of course, he knew the purpose for which he came. And the sins of the whole world was put upon him. And God, who was of a purer height than to behold iniquity, said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It was said that that was the first time in the history of creation of mankind, of existence of the heaven and earth, that the Trinity was separated. So sometimes when we are going through our tribulation, it appears as if God has forgotten what he said in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. He said, for he has said, I will never. I, I think for a time like this and for times to come, you need to put it by your bedside. I will never leave you nor forsake you. A forsaken man is a man that does not have hope. A forsaken man is a man that is going forward only to perish. But that's not our portion. So, so that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I see that what helped Isaac here was the fact that God said, don't go to Egypt. So John in this land, I will be with you and I will bless you. It was the blessing of the Lord upon his life that was becoming manifest as a result of obedience. What am I trying to say? I'm still painting the introduction. I want to show us this morning what your composure should be. When, even though you see your robot, but between the present place where you are and your robot, there are challenges. There are walls of Jericho. There are giants, the sons of Anak, before you, before you get there. You will permit me to share from the bottom of my heart because these are the things I'm facing. He, 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 he comforts us in our tribulation so that by the comfort we are comforted, we can comfort others. And I know I'm not alone in this situation. A brother was sharing with me what he was going through last Sunday and I said, brother, I know what you feel. I am also there with you. And while we are waiting, we are saying, Lord God, ah, if you are with us, like Gideon said, and as I was saying during the, the convention, why will all these things be happening? There is a place God is taking you to. Is building that your confidence in him. Is building your character to become the envy of others. Did you not notice that when Job was righteous and serving God and things were going for him, it was God that actually showed him as a, as a, as a masterpiece. If anybody caused problem for Job, it was God. It was God that said, look, have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him. And many times when God brings us out like that, the devil is mad. The devil is mad. He said, you think he's serving you for not? It's because things are rosy for him. It's because things are going well for him. Let me shake him a little bit and you will see to your face the man that you think trusts you. But because greater one is in you, you will not fail. So I want to show you how to get to this verse 13 and 14. The Bible says, For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds 
and great store of servants, and Philistines envy him. I want to take you to that point of envy. You know what? I, re- I realized recently that behind every glory, there is a story. When I had my issue, the promotion that was stepped down, and then many people began to speak to me and say, hey, calm down. They began to tell me the story of A, B, C, D, E. The VC, the former VC, I was told that when they stepped down the promotion of one man, the man is late now. And one of the professors came to him and said, uh-uh, Oga, why did you do that? You know, this person has been told to prepare. He has prepared food. Everybody was waiting in his house just for this announcement. And do you know, I think I shared it with you, what happened was that they mistakenly sent his paper to an associate professor. And that man assessed, I mean, assessed him as if he was a professor. Unfortunately, at the end of, 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 of the place, he had to sign. He signed his name and he said, associate professor. And they have already passed his paper. Everybody has said, yes, he could go. Then somebody raised his hand in that uh, central promotion committee and said, post approval comment. Are we now allowing an associate professor to assess our professors? That was it. All my three papers were sent to non-doctors. It was such, such that the glory might be greater. Amen. Because people are not flowing with you. They don't know what you are doing. So, it was at that point that the former VC now said, don't worry yourself, Professor Lagbaja. I cooked twice before, before my promotion was announced. Meaning that I have been through that position two times. That I thought my promotion was going to be announced and I have prepared food. Don't worry, we'll go and eat his food. We will encourage him. You know, the man did not survive. Eventually, the promotion was given some other two years' time or so. But by that time, he had taken to alcoholism. But you know God. And because you know God, you shall not fall by the wayside. I'm taking you to that place where you become a point of envy. And that's what God is laying in my heart. How to overcome your obstacles before you get to your Rehobo. So this morning, I want you to go with me. Uh-huh. Well, let me quickly say that he had become envy there, but he still had to pass through his ESSEC for, for, for sustenance and sustainable growth. He needed to dig wells because the farming was still on. If the dog ESSEC, they block it. If dog SITNA, they block it. And assuming he has stopped at ESSEC, he will not be able to dig SITNA. Assuming he has stopped at SITNA, which they also strove for, he will not be able to get to his real board. But finally, when he got to his real board, that was the point. Paul said, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord. It takes time to get to such a place. It takes time to get to such a place where the demons will look at you and say, what can we even do for this one? Let's leave him alone. There was a time Smith Wigglesworth said something. He said he woke up in the middle of the night and guru, 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 there, were, there were some things disturbing the furniture and things were moving up and down. And he woke up and he saw some demons. He just left back. And so is you. The demons were so humiliated. They just left quietly. He didn't even bother saying a word concerning us. You will get to your rest shortly. So I want to show us how to bypass all these challenges and get to our Rehobo. Looking beyond your obstacles, I wrote here, what are obstacles? They are challenges preventing our entrance to our expected end. For example, the Israelites. Let's go to Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Now, for you to know that this was not just a day thing. It's not a week thing. 
He took spies that were sent by Moses 40 days to spy the land of Jericho. And by the time they came back from that espionage, they brought evil reports, except two of them. So God had already concluded in his mind that they were going to translate each of the 40 days into uh, 40 years. Each, each, each day will become a year. So after they had been in the wilderness for so long, in fact for almost 40 years, Moses had died. It was now the turn of Joshua to take them to the land. So eventually they got there. Look at what happened. And now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. Sometimes the obstacles are erected by the enemy to prevent you from getting into your possession. And none went out. None came in. But look at what God has in his heart as his thoughts for them. And the Lord said to Joshua, See. Please, can you tell your neighbor, See. The Lord has said before you an open door. And no man will shut it. No man can shut it. While they were looking at solid walls, it was said that the wall was so big that people can live in the wall and two armor tanks can go side by side on the wall of Jericho. So who is going to fall or fell that wall? Who is going to break through that wall? The gates have been shut up. So how will the children of Israel enter? This is where God will make a difference. Amen. I say God will make a way for you. Where there seems to be no way, God will make a way for you. Oh, there was no way the people living in Jericho could have fathomed the way God was going to fight them. So, see, I have given into thy hand Jericho, say number one. And the kings thereof, say number two. And the mighty men of Allah, say number three. God had prepared three things for them inside. What was standing before them? Just one obstacle. Even for that, God has a solution. Praise the Lord. So, such is the obstacle we are talking about. Something that, who are these Israelites? When they were coming, they didn't have implements of war. They didn't have artillery. They didn't have uh, uh, bulldozer. So, how were they going to break down this wall? That is where God makes a difference. And it will make a difference in your life and in my life in the name of Jesus. So at this point, there were three obstacles. There was the war, there was the great king, and then there was the mighty man of valor. So if they were going to think in their mind how to overcome Jericho, they have to have an answer to these three things. And it also happened to several other people's in the Bible before, in, 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 in Second Chronicles chapter 20, you know and you remember of the war of Jehoshaphat with the three kings. You know, the kings of Monsia, the king of Moab, and the king of uh, 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 Amnon. The three of them came to him and Jehoshaphat said, we have no might against these people. Sometimes, I want to share with you categories of these obstacles. There are so many of them, but we will look at their category. But before we go there, turn with me to Numbers chapter 13. Forty years back, before that Jericho, Numbers chapter 13, there was a man that saw what others didn't see. Numbers 13. Let's read quickly from verse 25. And they returned thereof searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. There is no doubt where we are going is beautiful. And they told them, We came into the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey. Please, don't be of a doubtful mind. God is taking us to a glorious place. Amen. 
Nevertheless, look at that verse 28. The people be strong that dwell in the land. The cities are walled. They were talking about Jericho. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Etites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are what? Well able. Are you well able? Says, yes, we are. Say, yes, I am. And so shall it be for you. You shall scale every obstacle in your front in the name of Jesus. But look at Pastor John. But the men that went up with him say, we be not able to go up against the people. For they are stronger than we. They have forgotten the God factor. Many times, the warfare is not only physical, it is psychological. The enemy had brought up wars for a young student. A lecturer could say, if you don't do what I ask you to do, I will see how you will graduate here. We've had that several times before. The answer of the tongue that God should give a child of God will be, yes, sir, I know you can do and undo. But God has brought me here and God will see me through. Don't even say anything about it. You have just thrown a challenge to God. And God will take care of that man. It is psychological. Some people say you will become so, so, so and so only over my dead body. And that can be arranged. Amen. That can be arranged. Because in one night, in uh, 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 Isaiah chapter 37, one angel killed 185,000 Assyrians. One night. One angel. How much more? One man. All God needs to do is to allow him to just go into coma. Just coma for, for a few months. And before he wakes up, you have already graduated. Praise the Lord. The God factor is what this, all that uh, ten spies for God. They said what we saw there was too much. The Canaanites were there, the Amorites and the Jebusites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, all of them are there. And you know what? They are big stature. I don't know why you created us small. Look, it does not matter what your stature is like. God has put himself in you and you will achieve your potential in the name of Jesus. That potential is not yours, it is God and you will get there. I don't want to waste time. Majority saw obstacle, but Caleb saw something different. Let's go to Numbers chapter 14. Caleb saw something different. You must choose not to see the obstacle, but to see God. Numbers 14, 6 to 9. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that sat the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. What are you speaking about, your robot? Oh, are you started talking about where you are going to be? If you don't see the invisible, you cannot do the impossible. If you don't see that God is behind you, you cannot begin to talk about that land at least as if it is already your own. Look at what they were saying. Others were saying we saw giant. They said, look, the land is exceedingly good land. And if the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with what? Milk and honey. Are you designing a place filled with milk and honey? It will get better for you. Your beginning may be small, but your latter end shall be greatly increased. You must begin to see it, and not because of what you can do right now, but because of the greater one that is in you. That was the confidence of Joshua and Caleb in this passage. Forty years back. Forty years back. They said, if the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into the land. 
Verse 9. Only rebel not ye against the law. Neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bread for us. Their defense is what? Departed. Can you see what they have seen 40 years ago? But because of the unbelief of the majority. Please, can you tell your neighbor, don't slow us down in this church. If we don't go as one man, even when one or two of us believe God to move forward, the rest will drag us back. And I'm glad you are hearing this message this morning because you will not slow us down. Amen. Amen. We will get to that good land. We will get to that, that place that flows with milk and honey. Fear them not. So, I said, there are several obstacles that can be in the way of a man. First, lack of finances. Let's talk about the physical obstacle. Number one, lack of finances needed for your next level. It may not be a physical war. You know, lack of these finances can be as small as 50,000. Some people need 50,000. Why some people need 500 million? Can you compare 50,000 with 500 million? And that 50,000 can be, hey, sometimes some people, it is a month for their, for their, for their, for their contract, the house they have rented to be completed and they don't have the money to pay. And how much is the money? Maybe 36,000. Maybe 72,000. Maybe 300,000. But how is that compared with a big God? So it could be lack of finance for your next level. You may want to do business. You may want to pay school fees. You may want to build a house. Me, I mean, I need money. But I'm going to look at the invisible one this morning. Number two, it could be lack of supporters. You may not have parents who can sponsor you. You may not have brothers, uncle, auntie, families, those who have gone ahead of you. You may not have anybody abroad. Maybe you even have admission abroad, but who knows anybody? You don't even have even a distant cousin, even a friend that you can call. Oh boy, I'm coming though. Can you help me? Nobody. But you have God. Hallelujah. Number three, it could be giants, sons of Anak. These are intimidating circumstances that you look like grasshopper before. It could be a big professor. It could be whoever. It could be your boss. It could be others you are competing with at work. They seem to be ten times better than you. It does not matter. Your obstacle could be, could be difficult situations and circumstances that you wish you were dreaming. You remember when Joseph was thrown into that pit, that, that uh, bottomless pit that fortunately was not with water. He, he felt like he was, please tell me I'm dreaming. My brothers that I brought food for, throwing me into a pit as if I'm not one of them. Please somebody wake me up. Am I dreaming? And you see, his dream was shortly because Shortly after, they went and brought him out and sold him as a slave. He couldn't believe his eyes. He could be in such a situation. That your situation seemed to betray you. Your situation seemed to give you up. It seems you are sold into slavery and you cannot just fight back. You can't do anything. Have you ever had such a dream that you seem to be pressed down? You want to even shout the name of Jesus and you cannot. But today the Lord is bringing you out. Now, those are physical situations that we could face. And like I said before, it could be psychological obstacle in our mind. Turn to Isaiah, uh, time will, will fail me to talk about Isaiah 36, 37. Please get home, read it. You know, in that passage, there was a king of Assyria called Zenachary. He had conquered all the cities of Judah. Now he wanted to invade, invade Jerusalem. But before he did that, he put his army somewhere and he began to send his servant, Rabshake, to go and speak to King Ezekiah and say, look, oh, you better quickly come and make an uh, agreement with me. Because if you don't and you allow me to come into Jerusalem, I will so much destroy it. And listen, all the other gods that surround you, I mean, nations that surround you, have their God been able to deliver them? And he began to list them. 
the king of Libna, the king of this, the king of that. All of them were not able to deliver them. Will your own God deliver you? Hey, when Ezekiah had it, he was afraid. He was almost, you know, passing urine in his uh, underwear. You know what happened? The servant of Ezekiah said to Rabshake, please don't speak to me in, uh, in Jewish language. Speak to me in Syrian language. Don't speak Aramaic. Because the people on the wall, they will be afraid. <laughs> Rabshake said, you think I'm saying it so that they won't hear? I'm going to say it loud. Sometimes you want your shame to be quietly covered, but the enemy blows it up. Ha! And you wonder, hey, Lord, why will I take this shame? God will deliver you this morning. I don't know whether you have ever been in such a situation. Psychological warfare. The enemy has so much terrorized your mind. He has terrorized your mind. He said, Boloma, Agbeba. But God will deliver you. So, when it is like that, what are you supposed to do? Number one thing is one. Be sure you know the greater one. That's the first thing you must do. Because in that passage, which you can read later, uh, Isaiah 36, 37, Ezekiah had to send messenger to Isaiah. Hey, hey Baba Ami. Check, go on, cut him out, Esau. Hey, kill him out, bye. Isaiah said, don't worry yourself. He will not come into this city. He will not shoot an arrow to it. All of a sudden, this man heard that there is a war at the other side of his country. And he quickly carried his army and went to fight. But as he was going, he sent a messenger back. I'm coming back home. Don't think that this small war will deter me. Hey, Ezekiah took the letter and took it before the Lord and wept and cried. The end of it all, was in Isaiah 37 when God sent just one angel and he killed 185,000 Assyrians overnight. He will fight for you. You will hold your peace. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. If you have not memorized this passage, that is the first place of your anchor. One of the things we are told at the convention is that you are seated in heavenly places. You were told that greater is he that is he that is in you. You were told that, you know, uh, 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 when God made you, he put his genes in you. He said, let us make man in what? In our image, in our likeness. Um, Second Corinthians, did I say Second Corinthians 4.4? 4. Okay. Sorry, I wanted that one that says you have got little children and you have overcome them for greater is it that is in you. Is it not second? First John 4 4. First John 4 4. Hallelujah. You are of God. And even though compared to God, you are children. You remember Peter speaking to Peter in John chapter 20. He said, Children, have you any meat? When compared to God, we are God's children. And God is saying of you, you are of God, little children, and you have what? Overcome them. I heard David Oedeko speaking this morning. He said, the victory that you are supposed to enjoy was obtained 2,000 years ago. When you became born again, you become due for those privileges. But if right now, how many years after you have given your life to Christ, you are still in such bondage, you are overdue for the blessings of God. Look at it. He said, you have overcome them. It does not matter whether it's a physical challenge, whether it's a psychological challenge that you are facing, whatever it is that is the obstacle between you and that portion of land that God has given you that flows with milk and honey, what does the Bible say? You have overcome them. Tell your neighbor you are an overcomer. I think Brother Luashola is one already. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a good name, brother. And I hope you remember all the time. Don't drop that name. He said you have overcome them. You are, oh look, it doesn't matter their number. It doesn't matter their size. Oh, the Israelites failed to realize this. 
But Caleb and Joshua, 40 years before, had already realized that. No wonder only two of them made it when eventually they were going to enter Jericho. You will get to your inheritance. Why? He said, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Please, tell me something good that is in the world today. Isaiah 62 says, darkness shall cover their heart, gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. That's why he says, because of the greater one that is in us, we have overcome the world. We are not going to be moved by what we see because we are not operating by what we see. We are operating by the word of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, say, for we walk by faith and what? Not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. You have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let me say to you that Adam and Eve were the most powerful people on earth. And you know what happened to them? When Satan came in form of serpent and was saying, as God said, that is what happened to them. They did not recognize. They did not remember who they were in Christ. Ah, as God said, you cannot eat of any of these things. When God did not give them any limitation, even the tree of life was for them to eat so they could live forever. The enemy pointed them to the only tree that God said, I'm just testing your obedience. Don't eat this. Leave that for me as your creator. And they failed. You will not fail in Jesus' name. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Number two, you must know that God is faithful. What's God's name? Faithful. What's God's name? When we say somebody is faithful, it means that irrespective of the situation, challenges, circumstances, that person will never disappoint. Second Corinthians, chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There are no temptation overtaking you, but such as is common to man. God is faithful. Please, church, say it. God is what? God is what? God is what? Oh, God is faithful. 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 Brethren, God is faithful. Faithful is he who has called you, who we also do it. The middle name of God is faithful. He's faithful. God knows our breaking point. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He will not allow you any obstacle that is beyond you. And with every temptation, also make a way of escape. For the Israelites, it was just patience and obedience. If you read uh, uh, Joshua chapter, chapter 6, he said, March round that big wall. March round that big fence once a day and go and rest. Uh -uh. Lord, we want this job done quick, 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 quick. Lord, God said, don't worry. Just obey me. And they marched around it once. They rested. Twice. I mean, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. And on the seventh day, all of a sudden, the command changed. Mark around it seven times today. Uh -uh. You must be careful to listen to the detail of his instruction. And at the seventh time, they blew the trumpet and shouted. And what happened to the wall of Jericho? Fell flat. Ah, uh -uh. Now, if it had fallen outwards, depending on how close, it could have hurt them. But the Bible says every man marched straight forward ahead of him. What happened? That wall sank. Every obstacle before you today will sink. But you need to believe God. You need to believe him that is what? Faithful. Faithful. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. 
faithful are you, Lord. You are so faithful. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. You are so faithful. Amen. Number three, you must be bold and courageous. You must be bold and courageous. In Numbers chapter 13, verse 30, we saw Caleb saying, we can go at once and take this mountain and take this city for their defense has departed from them. If it was left for Caleb alone, do you know he would go? And you know, many years later in Joshua, you know, he said, as I was 40 years ago, now I'm 85. I'm as strong as I am. Give me this mountain. But I'm looking at 40 years behind. He was bold and courageous. Look at Romans chapter 8 verse 31. So what then shall we twenty? We saw that Jehoshaphat, when he was going to that battle that day, sent singers. And not only there because of that, because of Holy Spirit. And they were singing the faithfulness, oh, praising the Lord for his mercies and joy forever. And as they began to praise God, what happened? Those who wanted to destroy them began to face each other and they destroy one another. So shall it be to your enemies. Amen. They shall be destroyed. Number four, look not at the obstacle. Second Corinthians 5, 7 again. For we walk by faith and not walk by sight. Remember second, uh, the first uh, John 4, 4 that we read. We are going to walk in the reality of the greater one inside. Not the giants that you see. Was it not a giant that confronted David? David did not see the giant. What David saw was the loophole that God made him to see. That is a loophole God is telling me that the enemy has said that is not yet seen. That shall be your way of escape in Jesus' name. That is a loophole. That is something that God deliberately left that you could easily use to defeat your enemy. May God open your eyes to see it in Jesus' name. David said to Goliath, to come to me with, 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 with sword and with staff, but I come unto you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whom you have defied today. And as he did that, he took a stone and slung it, and of course, Goliath fell down flat. So, what must we do? We must not look at the obstacle. May I ask you where, you, where are your eyes fixated on? What are you looking at? The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. If you do not look unto him, there is not going to be a finishing. Oh, you started with Jesus, all right. But to finish, you must also behold him. They looked unto him, their faces were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Shame will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, our master, the author. When they say somebody is the author, you know you wrote the script. Hey, just don't know who you wrote it. God wrote the script of our life. It's not just about your faith. And I thank you for what you said, Mr. Kilari. Your race, the timing for your race is different from every other person. Many times you see some people, some things happen to them here, and you are wondering, Lord, when is it going to be my time? You are not running their race, you are running your own race. Look unto the author and the finisher of your own race. That's what Pastor Dole said. The volume of the book written of you. If you don't understand it, you will not find it. What is written about you? What did that author 
put in course of your race, the things that you must pass through. I think because of me, they must be you this way, amen. Sometimes I feel like just going there, eh? Praise the Lord. You must look unto Jesus. I will look unto him that places you are lighting. And the places you are not ashamed. Second Corinthians 4 18. We all, as we can open face, behold us in the mirror. The glory of the Lord. We are what? We are changed. Do you know? Do you know? So I want to go to the last point I'm going to discuss. He says, we look unto him that he will supply the grace that you need to finish well. He doesn't give you all of the grace at once. That's why he said to uh, Brother Paul, when Paul said, ah, bro, this infirmity is too much, please take it away. He said, you know what? My grace is sufficient for you. So, as 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says, as we behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we are changed. The frequently you look unto him, the frequently, or with the frequency with which you look unto him, is the frequency in which more grace is Positive in your life. Now, what you think, which helps you get that, not the word praise, it's God in your list. Did you hear me? Grace is God in your list. I've never had it before like that. You know that grace is God's riches and Christ's mercy. But we have been told that that word grace is God in your list, God running with you. Is God in your race. Now, that brings me to the last point, growing grace. If you want to scale the obstacles that are challenging you, preventing you from getting to your reward, you must grow in grace. For instance, brethren, we know that when Joseph initially had the dream of the sheets, how many of you remember the dream? The level sheets. His own was standing the eleven sheets were found in that. He did not have the understanding of what it meant. Another time he saw the stars, the moon, eleven stars, and the, the sun and the moon bowing down to him. He did not understand it. All of a sudden, he was sold to Potiphar's house. But God was with him. All of a sudden, he was thrown into the prison. And then, the grace had grown so much in his life that he began to interpret dreams. If he had had that grace when he had his own dream, would he not have made all the difference? But what I noticed that David was, I mean, Joseph was growing in grace. He was growing in grace. And that thing that he did, interpreting Pharaoh's servant dream, was what paved the way for him when the fullness of time come in his race to be brought before King Pharaoh, the grace was full upon his life to interpret Pharaoh's dream. If you don't grow in grace, you will not be prepared for your place of showing up. Now, how is it that we can grow in grace? That's a lot of the creating behold his face as in a mirror on a daily basis. As you behold his face, you are changed. More grace is imparted. More grace is imparted. Before we read that passage, another example that I saw is Caleb. Caleb was a young man at 40 when initially he met the Anakims. And he thought that, oh, let me just go there. Brethren, was he going to live there alone? How many Anakims were he? Was he going to kill by himself? God said to Caleb, don't worry, I will take you there, but it is not yet time. Let's go to Joshua, Joshua chapter 14. I want us to read from verse 6 to 13. At this point, that will make it clear that it means to go in grace. Let's go to Joshua. Joshua chapter 14. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of 
the Kinesite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Thirty years old was I. The servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I will brought him word again as it was in my heart, yes. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But what? Are you with me, brethren? That is what brings grace in the life of the man. When you only follow God, grace is imparted. When Joseph was in that Potiphar's house, it seemed he had got to his robot. Oh, he could have said, why don't I enjoy the blessings of God and take some things from the devil's table? But not Joseph. Joseph also only took freedom. Bless you. And Moses swore on that day, saying, surely the land whereupon thy feet are trodden shall be thy inheritance. So shall it be for you. That's why I'm saying what you see, the robot you have seen, the place of promise, that place of peace, and thy children is forever because thou hast only followed the next. The Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. Grace will keep you. Grace will keep you. Can you close that and quickly give me John chapter 14, verse 33? Uh, if you can give me the answer. John 14, 33 he said, These things are written unto you. You have peace. Am I moving too much? In the world, you shall have tribulation. Yes. 1633, 16. Think you might have peace. Can you give me amplifier? I want to show you something. Do this thing so that in me you may have what? Perfect peace. What? shall have, or you will have tribulation. And what? Trials. And what? And this is not the gospel that is often preached. But Jesus said it to us many years ago. If the story ended there, it would have been terrible. He said, but what? Be of good cheer. That was what I noticed in Caleb. Oh, the guy was still vibrant, agile. He was, he was ready. You know, when you want to run a race and you are the starting mark, this was how Gideon, I mean, Caleb was doing that day. Remember Moses, I'm as ready, I'm as fit as I was 45 years ago. We'll get back to that story and you'll see. Be of good cheer. Take courage. Be well confident. Many of us lose confidence along the way. Ah, God, you keep, you keep murmuring like the Israelite murmur. They may not have examples. You have examples. You don't have excuse. We will see you through. My time is almost up. He says, be confident, certain, undaunted. I want to give you this thing to go home. Go on. Write it out, paste it by your bed. So when you want to be doubted, say, no, I'm going to be what? Undoubted. For I have the world. I have the world. I for you. Enter the church. Uh, uh, that Joshua, chapter 14. I'll talk to Joshua 14. No, no, let's go forward. Now, and yet, as strong this day as I was in the day that he sent me. 
as my strength was there. Is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Your strength will fail until you get to your Rehobo. I say your strength will not fail until you get to Rehobo. You may be wondering, oh God, when, when? Just wait for it. The promise is for an accepted, I mean, appointed time. If it tarry, wait for it. You will get there. You will get there. Amen. He said, now, therefore, give me what? This mountain. As the Lord spake in that day, for thou knowest in that day how the Anakims were there and they were still there. And that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord has said. Hallelujah. This was after the wall of Jericho had fallen. And Joshua was dis- I mean, distributing their inheritance. Your own inheritance, nobody else will take it. I can see somebody is close to his inheritance this morning. Please don't give up. You will get there. You will get there. You will get there. So, you need to grow in grace to get there. Let's now read that passage. Second Corinthians, Second Peter 3.18. 2 Peter 3.18. It says, but grow in what? In grace. Please preach it to your neighbor. Grow in grace. Don't be lacking in grace. Grow in grace. Grow in grace. You must grow in grace. See the grace of God upon your life. You must grow in grace. For growing grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be glory and honor, both now and forevermore. All these men grew in grace. So, when the neighbor was able, was ready to deliver their robots to their hands, what were they doing? What were they doing? They were strong. They could take it. You will not faint before you get to your robot. That means you must grow in grace. You must grow. So, finally, as we close this morning, this is Psalm 18, verse 28, 29. Psalm, Psalm 18, verse 28, 29. Psalm 18. For thou will light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Say amen. That what's going to happen to you as you leave this auditorium today? For by thee I have run through a truth. By my God I have leaped over a wall. I don't care what obstacle is standing before you, you will leap over it. Hey, 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 hey. Look, let me tell you in the physical. Supposing you are a lion and you are coming from that direction and this gate is closed. Do you know that there is something that the body can secrete? It's called adrenaline. It will give you so much strength, courage, and ability that you can leap over that wall. Because you are afraid of the light. How much more? When God is saying, I will light your candle. So that's your candle that is about dying. God will lighten it. The Lord will enlighten your darkness. And by your God, you will break through the truth. By your God, you will leap over your wall. Rise on your feet this morning. Rise on your feet this morning. Rise on your feet this morning. I say yes. Oh, yeah. To your will and to your way. I say yeah. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me with my I my answer will be yeah. Oh yeah, I say yeah. I'd like you to sing with confidence this morning. Trust you and obey when your spirit.
Amen. Amen. Is there anybody here this morning? You are facing a mighty mountain. Your one fear that is before you appears great. It appears as if you have no mind. Like Jehoshaphat cried. Ezekiah said, the children have come to the place of birth, but there is no strength to bring them. God has decided to undertake for us in this church, and he will undertake for you. Are you saying with me this morning, Lord, give me this mountain. Give me this. I am not afraid of the war. I am not afraid of the mighty men. I am not afraid of the king. I'm not afraid of the sons of hierarchy. All I'm saying this morning, give me this mountain. Can you come forward? I want to pray with you as you sing. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may live. You are saying, God, give me this mountain. Please come forward. Give me this mountain. Church, are we here this morning? Sing it again. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control wherever you may lead our way. your hands on your heart. Say, you are my guide this morning, Lord. As I leap over this wall, as I cross this mountain, you are going to go with me. I'm bold and confident. I trust you. You have given me the victory 2,000 years ago. Presently, I'm seated with you in heavenly places. And I'm far above principalities and power. I'm far above the situation and circumstances. I am more than conqueror. Oh Lord, these are the ones you are addressing this morning. They are the ones you are addressing. And they have stepped out to take their mountain. Oh Lord. Oh, Lay your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Yes, 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 yes. You are climbing your mountains. You are breaking through the truth. They cannot hold you back again. You are breaking through the truth. You are scaling your mountain. It doesn't matter what they are. Oh, the shepherd of our soul is here. The great I am is here. The one that brought deliverance for David is here. Delivered Ezekiah is here. The one that delivered Jehoshaphat is here. Oh, Mrani Toposh. Engla de Ribo, wo, 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 so tori glaoya de bo, wo, wo. Yebra gale bro bo de gale bo, wo, wo. In Jesus' name we pray. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven and of things on earth and of things that are underneath the earth and every tongue shall confess of Jesus. Over your situation, Jesus is Lord. 
over your stronghold this morning, Jesus is Lord. Over your mountains this morning, Jesus is Lord. Over your financial need, Jesus is Lord. God, little children, said the spirit of the Lord, but greater is he that is in you. That way of escape, the Lord will open you to see. That strength to scale your world, the Lord will grant unto you. You don't need to fight in this battle. The battle is the Lord's. Fight for you. Oh, Father, that which you did in the days of Joshua and Caleb, that which you did in the day of Joshua in which you made the wall of Jericho before them to sink. Oh God, all the Egyptians that your people have seen up until today, they shall see them no more in the name of Jesus. All you that have gathered yourself together, the Bible says, associate yourself together, you shall be broken to pieces. Take counsel, it shall come to naught. Every counsel that has been taken against this one today, they fall to nothingness. In the name of Jesus. All the subsisting mountains, all the subsisting obstacles, today they become a plague. In the name of Jesus. As you go today, the God in your race will go with you. By him you will scale your wall. By him you will break through the truth. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. In the name of Jesus. Nothing shall by any means stop you short. In the name of Jesus. And you will get to the place where that mountain is staying. You will discover it is gone. You will discover no longer there. Go and possess your possession. Go and possess your possession. And receive the victory. God has gone ahead of you. He has gone ahead of you. Continue to go in grace. His knowledge. Continue to behold him. The author of your script. The author of your life. The one that has already predicted the victory for you. He will hold you by your hand. He will go with you. You will come back to testify. You will come back to testify of the victory that is given to you. That victory is being delivered to your hand today. Don't ever let it go away. Hold on to it. It is the victory of God. It is the victory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir.